Hi guys, it's Shelly from Adventures of a Labor Nurse. November is National Diabetes Month, and so I wanted to talk about something that impacts a lot of our patients, which is gestational diabetes. Um, I wanted to start off by saying I am not a diabetic educator, so if you are a woman and you're um, listening to this video, make sure that you talk to your healthcare provider um, about your diabetes questions, but if you have any questions that I'm able to answer, feel free to post them below and I'll um, answer them to the best of my ability. So if you are pregnant and you're, it's your very first doctor's appointment, a lot of times um, you get routine lab work done and you don't really know what they're doing, you just know that they're doing it. And so one thing that I encourage all women to ask about is um, what their A1C is. That's a hemoglobin A1C and that measures the amount of sugar in your blood over a period of time, um, three months, I think, it's three months. And so um, it kind of will tell you at the very beginning of your pregnancy whether you already had um, diabetes or if your numbers were good. Um, your A1C should be less than 5.7. <laughs> uh, less than 5.7. Um, Look, look that up just to make sure, but I think it's 5.7. So a 5.7 to 6.5 is considered pre-diabetic. And so I personally think that there's a lot of women out there that are just walking around um, as type 2 diabetics and they don't even know it. And so when you're pregnant, a lot of times you don't get um, checked out, like you don't get that A1C checked. And so you don't know until that one hour glucose test, that real gross drink that you drink, you know, around 28 weeks of pregnancy, um, whether you have gestational diabetes. And if that number comes back elevated, um, we don't know if you just had, you know, type 2 diabetes to begin with. So um, at the very beginning of your pregnancy, just ask your pr provider, you know, what is my A1C? Can we check my A1C? Um, just to kind of see where you're uh, starting off at. Gestational diabetes is very complicated. Um, I'm not going to go into the details because I'm not a diabetic educator, but I can talk about some of the other things um, that have to do with gestational diabetes. So when you're gestational diabetic, one of the, um, so let's start off with being diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So um, if you do that glucose drink, okay, like I said, around 28 weeks of pregnancy and you, I don't want to use the word fail, but if you don't pass it, then you have to do a three hour glucose test. And for the three hour glucose test, you should be fasting, which means you shouldn't eat or drink anything for six to eight hours prior to having the uh, glucose test done. And the three hour test, if two of your numbers come back elevated, you have a diagnosis of gestational diabetes. So for my pregnancy, um, with my first pregnancy, I did not pass my one hour glucose test and I had to do the three hour glucose test and I, I passed the three hour glucose test, um, but I still ended up with a 10 pound baby. And so um, I really wish in hindsight that I kind of would have been a little bit more aware of that um, because I think I was an undiagnosed gestational diabetic. With my second son, the moment I found out I was pregnant, I, I said, I was a nurse by then, and I said, I'm gonna count every single carb that goes into my mouth. And I did, and I still ended up gestational diabetic. <laughs> so some people um, cannot, it's not anything that you're doing. Some people are going to end up with gestational diabetes. Some people, once you already have gestational diabetes, no matter what you do, you're still, your numbers cannot be controlled. Um, that's like a true diabetic. Uh, every, like I said, I counted every single carb that went into my mouth. I, I could not control my fasting um, sugars in the morning. It just, they were high. So I ended up on um, oral medication. Um, okay, so back to where I was. So whenever you um, have a diagnosis of gestational diabetes, one of the first things that your provider is probably gonna ask you to do is to start checking your blood sugar four times a day. Um, that's, you're going to test it once fasting, which is right when you wake up before you eat or drink anything. And then two hours after the first bite of breakfast, two hours after the first bite of lunch and two hours after the first bite of dinner. All of these numbers you want to log down on a piece of paper or on a, you know, whatever, um, 
log that your provider gives you, you want to make sure that you write down these numbers. I cannot stress the importance of um, having these numbers with you and knowing what your blood sugars are. As a healthcare provider, we cannot do absolutely anything if we don't know what your glucose is. And so it's really important to see the trend. Um, like in my case, for instance, all of my numbers were fine um, because I was controlling it with diet except my fasting glucose. I could not control that. And so when they were able to look at that, um, they were able to say, look, Shelly, you're doing everything you can, but you're still gonna need medication. Um, so it's very, very important that you test your blood sugar and that you write it down. Your glucose, the fasting glucose should be under 95 and the two hour after your meal blood sugar should be under 120. Again, talk to your healthcare provider about the numbers that they want you to follow. Um, but those are um, the numbers that we go by. So you're gonna t test your blood sugar four times a day, you're gonna write it down, and then it's really important that you bring this log with you to every single appointment that you have so that everybody can kind of be monitoring it. Um, most providers will recommend you to a diabetic educator, which I highly, highly recommend. Uh, I work with some absolutely fantastic diabetic educators, and I, I think that everybody should have to go to a diabetic education class um, because you just learned so many things that you know you never really thought of, and even if you aren't, you know, diabetic, the eating habits that they talk to you about are really, really good. And you don't really know how much sugar you're eating until you really kind of like learn and start to um, start to really look at it and analyze it. Um, so if you are gestational diabetic or even if you're just pregnant, I'd encourage you to talk to your provider and ask them for a referral to um, a nutritionist or a diabetic educator. They are a wealth of information. So, okay, I'm already starting to kind of lose my voice. So, um, so we've talked about the importance of checking your blood sugar, and now we're going to talk about some of the complications that can happen when you have a diagnosis of gestational diabetes. And um, I could probably go on and on and on about this topic alone, and then I'm going to do separate topics for the other stuff because it would be such a long video. Um, so some of the maternal complications with having gestational diabetes is having a really big baby. And that can impact the kind of delivery that you have. I had a 10 pound baby. I had her vaginally. Uh, it took a long time. Um, I, I would do it again. I would, do, I think I would do it again. I can't jump on a trampoline, but I think I would do it again. Um, you know, it, there's complications with having a really big baby and not everyone can have a really big baby vaginally. It's not automatic that you have to have a cesarean delivery if you have a big fat baby, but um, you know, the risk is greater. There's a risk of having a shoulder dystocia, which means that, you know, the baby gets stuck, which we don't, we don't like that term in labor and delivery. Um, and that's a rare complication, but it does happen. And so it's something that you need to be aware of. Um, having gestational, a diagnosis of gestational diabetes also predisposes a woman to having type two diabetes later in life. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the number, but I think it's something like 50%. It's a lot. I mean, it, it tremendously increases your risk of being a type two diabetic. And so, um, you know, that's another complication. With your baby, besides um, being big, when the baby is born, they're used to having so much sugar inside that when they're born, they don't have that, and so they tend to get super low blood sugar. And super low blood sugar for babies can lead to, um, it's like a cascade effect. It can lead to breathing problems, oxygen issues. Um, it affects every single vital sign that a baby has. And so, um, if a baby is born and the baby is large for gestational age, a lot of hospitals will have protocols where, you know, you have to test the baby's blood sugar for X amount of hours or X amount of days after delivery just to make sure that the baby's um, glucose is stable. So um, those are a couple of risks. Um, having gestational diabetes in pregnancy, um, there is a correlation between stillbirths and diabetes, um, and so that risk is 
greatly increased if you're um, not controlled. So if your blood sugar is out of control, um, you're more likely to have some of these risks. Um, early in pregnancy, um, early in pregnancy, like if you're one of those secret, you know, uh, type 2 diabetics and you just don't know it, um, there is a risk with miscarriage. Um, and so if you have a history of miscarriage, of miscarriages, you know, one of the first things that most providers will do is to check your A1C to see if you are um, really a type 2 diabetic. I hope that um, this has been helpful. I want to kind of keep this video a little bit short. In the next video, I'm going to try to do um, one in a couple of days, and I'm going to talk about um, counting carbs and kind of the foods you should be eating, and I hope that somebody found this video helpful.